I'm like, that hold on, man. Thing. I understand that as an athlete, you have to give love to your players. If you're quarterback, you have to give love to your a great catch. But to say that that was the greatest catch you ever saw, I said, nah, I gotta make a film about this. That's, <laughs> not, that's not the greatest catch. Maybe you weren't on the field, but that was one for Rich. Watching Sports Center, ESPN. I forgot when it was. Gronkowski made that catch, and then locker room athlete said, that was the greatest catch you ever saw. I said, to differ. I said, hell to the knock. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you to put this together? Well, it took longer. The editor, Randy Wilkins, Dan and Randy, and Randy edited the film. <laughs> One of my former students at NYU, uh, NYU Mafia. But uh, we had, I think, two shooting days. The most difficult thing was uh, scheduling, you know, because Eli's still playing, you know, coach is playing, so. Uh, but it was fun. I mean, I always enjoy doing where I could just do stuff. My two loves film and sport. And so uh, I'm a Giants fan. Grew up, I gotta be honest, grew up a Jets fan. I'm of the age where Joe Willie Namath, Namath was my guy. But uh, I was at both Super Bowls. And as I said earlier, somebody outside, the one thing I feel that diminished this film was Pete Carroll. Well, that's what I was, I was going to get to. This that film would be better if the Patriots had lost. Well, but, but, but is there something special? I, that's why I asked how long it took you because it worked out. They're celebrating their, you know, fourth title. But you're here as a Giants fan saying, but yeah, we still got you twice. You can't take that from us. It's kind of good that the time it worked out that way. No. <laughs> you wanted a, a win, a loss. I, first of all, I'm in New York and I hate any team in Boston. <laughs> any team. Red Sox, Celtics, Patriots, Bruins, doesn't matter. Little League, doesn't matter. <laughs> but I, did, I was talking to, to the guys, and I mean, anytime I, I see anybody who's played professional football, the first question is, why did Pete Carroll throw that ball? <laughs> the ball's on the half-yard line. If anybody in the league is going to get a half-yard, it's beast mode. Mm -hmm. Why would you throw the ball and, and let the Patriots get a championship? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Well, it, what's interesting about that, and, I, and I've said this before, uh, that, that history is very much written in single space because the margin between being a footnote and being famous is, is that small. I mean, David Tyree, greatest catch ever. Are people talking about it if you don't catch the touchdown pass? Does anybody talk about your main curses catching the Super Bowl? He almost was the next Tyree. And, they, and they're half a yard away to your point, Spike, but they don't seal the deal. So, Plax, uh, David talked about, you know, hearing the music in his head when the ball was in the air. You talked about how, how the ball was going so slow. What were you thinking when the ball was coming down? That looked like a simple catch, but we've seen people drop balls like that before. Well, I wasn't going to drop that one because I was telling myself, I said, man, if I drop this ball, I cannot go back to New Jersey. Or New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I had to find a way to catch this football. And it, it, it just seemed like eternity for me because, you know, I knew the route. And like I said in the film, I didn't think that it would give me single coverage. And yeah. I just kind of just lit up. I was smiling, smiling on that big mouthpiece I had. And I knew the ball was coming before anybody else did. And it was just, you know, just catch it, man. Just get your feet in, man. Let's go home. Is there anything or, that David Tyree could possibly do to get that ball from you? Anything he could offer you. Come on, brother. Say it again. Anything he could offer you. That's still fighting over that ball. I mean, I mean he, he, he gave us a world championship. I mean, he can't offer me anything else better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, I have football. We're not going to get into that again. But, but he gave us a world championship. And like I said, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And, and, and my catch wouldn't happen if, you know, if, if he doesn't make that play. And I say that, you know, um, nobody else can make that play. But him, I, I couldn't have made it. I, I couldn't have made it. At that point in time, like, you know, the stage, the moment, you know, when it happened, two minute no huddle, just, uh, just everything that went into it with, you know, Eli, you know, getting out of that that sack and him throwing it. I was screaming, like, no, don't throw it. And for him to make that catch at that time, the way it happened, uh, nobody else could have made that play at that, that time but him. Chris, what other, what other members came as you were watching? Um, watching that and how and looking yeah, back so and how I want to watch the whole game. Yeah. I'd like to stay I, I here. Haven't, I haven't watched it yet. You haven't watched it? The whole game? I've never watched it. Ooh. I 
I'm not saying, brother. I'm saying. <laughs> 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 I want you to know we won. Yeah, I know. Can I, can, I, can I make a confession? Uh, since we all, you know, friends and family here. Um, everybody remembers where you were when certain moments like that happened. You know where I was? Asleep. I had partied the night before in Phoenix. Didn't have to cover the game. They got this social media thing going. But you know what? I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, like I said, you know, when, you, when I look at the magnitude, and I said this often, the magnitude of the catch, what it brought to New York City, 17 years waiting for another championship, yeah. me being from Jersey, you know, listen, I'm a humble recipient, you know, like, you know, you, you can't write this, you can't write the script any better for a guy like myself. Yeah. So, you know, you know, and then, like I said, you can't take that much credit. It's not like I was practicing that, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I just I just take it, uh, as, receive it as a blessing, man. And, you know, I think the best part is with the, the best memories that stir up are, are, are these guys, the, the kind of guys that we went to war with, the team, the resolve, the clowns, and uh, the great moments. I just want to give a shout out to Rodney Harris. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. he was usually guys of, correct if I'm wrong, guys of too much pride to say what he said. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't getting paid for it, nothing. So, you know, he did a big solid because you just can't have all giants in this. Well, what, did, you, did you ask for any other Patriots or try to get any other ones? Nah, or? he was the one. He was, he was the only one you wanted? Yeah. The one. I mean, who's else going to do it? <laughs> He's on air, and so I know him a little bit. Yeah. But to have, you got to have the Patriots side of this. And, yeah. and I think that he, I want to thank Rodney for doing it because oh, no. it really balances out. Otherwise, it's like, we're great, we're great, we're great, we're great, we're great. But he was honest, and those, that's why I'm still mad they won that. I mean, they, <laughs> <laughs> they should not have another, they should not have another Super Bowl. So. <laughs> <laughs> they can't live, bro. <laughs> they can't, they, we beat them twice. Yeah, you always have that. But uh, Rodney was very, very, I mean, uh, he told me. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think he was going to say it on camera. But we started rolling, he said, Spike, before you came here, I went in my closet, I started praying. Because he didn't, he didn't, we shot in his home, we flew to Atlanta for this. He threw advice in his home, and it was almost like, it was almost like a confession. Mm -hmm. And very, I mean, very often, there's a lot, there's a, the, the, do you get to hear from a loser? You know, and, and you know, I might say, well, they, they're a better team. But that, that was like, those were really hard, raw feelings that he's going to feel that way till mm -hmm. the rest of his life. Yeah, seven years later, too. Yeah, seven years later. Yeah, and yeah. it's not going to change it's 20 years from now. Yeah, that's all I was asking if you had tried to get other ones, because I'm sure most of them is still too painful to discuss. Chris, uh, I'll ask you. know you. Belichick was saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, I'll, I'll ask We can include your two catches in it, but this, you know, it had to be built around Tyree's catch. Absolutely. I uh, want to take some questions from the audience. Hi guys. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for your victory. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the film. Great movie. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask something. You talked about humility before, David, and about how Rodney Anderson Harrison basically accepted what happened. Um, how do you feel about those commentators? I won't name the city, like Boston, um, <laughs> and I won't name a network, say like ESPN, who uh, who basically have made excuses for the Patriots, who basically said you guys lucked out. Like Bill Simmons always. He's crazy. That's one, by the way, that's one guy. You can't say like ESPN. Or maybe, or maybe, that's one person. Or, right, that's <laughs> right. Well, not just ESPN, but maybe, maybe. Uh, I remember Peter King ranked uh, the, uh, the 2008 Patriots as the best team of the decade, which I don't agree with because they didn't do the job. They didn't get the job done. So, I mean, how do you feel about that perception that you guys, that you guys basically lucked out, which of course you didn't, of course. But I mean, uh, but it kind of makes me mad as a New York fan that uh, that people try to downplay your victory. I mean, like personally, you know, it doesn't do me any harm. I got a, I got a ring. Show the ring. Show the ring. I got me a ring. You know? <laughs> so I mean, like, so from a personal perspective, you know, but I, but I get it. I mean, I think you know, there's some measure of resentment that goes along with. It. I think a lot of people. I think it spoiled the plans of a lot of people. You know, and that maybe whether it was their own sports scene, whether they had their own biases. You know, people. You know, you watch Tom Brady be great for so long, you you, you become a fan, even as a as a as an analyst. You know, so I think. Maybe that's part of it, but at the end of the day, 
you know, the best team won that day. They won twice. <laughs> 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 And how do you feel that what she said to you played a role in um, the greatest catch ever? Well, I think it was direct. You know, um, it's very simple, man. I'm just a normal Christian. I'm born again. You know, it's kind of, I love Jesus radically. And uh, she, she had been a part of my life. She wasn't my pa pastor, but she'd been a part of my life. So when she said those words, as a believer, I'm just a believer, so I believe God as, as the Lord was using and, uh, you know, the next morning, you know, and the, the, the profound thing about it was her husband actually got on the phone and said, um, the world's no longer going to remember you as a special teams player, but as a receiver. And, um, and what was pretty neat about that, and, and I'm still I'm going to fish out the local Arizona paper, but you know, the paper the next day gets to the catch, talks about the catch. Toward the end of the article, it says the world will no longer remember him as a special teams player, but as a receiver who made the greatest catch in football history. Mm -hmm. And what it, te what, it, what it does for me personally is it, it reminds me that my God's alive. You know, my God is alive. I don't serve a, a dead God. I serve a God that's personal, that actually cares about me as, a, as an individual to the point that it would impact an entire, you know, sports, sports contest. And so, um, you know, it wasn't by surprise. It wasn't by happenstance. It was foretold, and it was in the mind of God. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm a humble recipient of something that really transcends the game of football. And I get the chance to impact people's lives because of it. You guys, can I start with you? Like, how did this change your life personally, uh, catching the game with a touchdown in the Super Bowl? Man, I, I don't think I really understood the magnitude of it until we got back to, uh, to New Jersey. You know, um, you know, I woke up that morning and I came downstairs, and the first person I saw was John Mayer. And it was like, uh, you know, it was, it was just a great moment. Let's celebrate, have fun, let's you know, try to do it again next year. And the first call I got that morning was from uh, was Ron Bettis. <clears throat> he was like, it feels good, doesn't it? I was like, man, you, you have no idea what that, what that feeling is. And, you know, we flew from Phoenix to, to uh, back to New Jersey. And, you know, I, I expected it for it to be, you know, a little rowdy. But, but <laughs> when, we, when we landed in Newark, I mean, we was going – Turnpike North, and all the traffic on the Turnpike South was stopping. People like standing on top of their car, right. and I was like, "Man, this this might get out of hand a little bit." <laughs> <laughs> and like, you see like a million, two, three million people at a parade, and it just you know we didn't understand the magnitude of it until we got back here, and then we went over to the stadium after the parade. And I'm, I'm pulling my truck up in the, uh, in the parking lot. And the, the fans out there tailgate like we got a game. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, we just want to see when the game is over. But they was out there in their tents. They was barbecuing, having a good time. So I'm driving my car, you know, trying to get to the, to the stadium. And they're, like, pushing my car back and forth. And I'm like, yo, stop. You're going to flip my truck. <laughs> but, yeah, um, but, you know, it was just a, a moment that you, know, you can't you know, really explain it. Mm -hmm. Because as a, as a child, you know, growing up, live it or draw it up any better than how it happened. I mean, this game with a Super Bowl kids, I mean, what, what kid that plays football doesn't want to you know, do it in that fashion? Yeah. What about you, Chris? None of us knew what to expect. You know, like, like Plus is talking about, you dream about it, but you don't know until it actually happens. And, um, I mean, that first Super Bowl, it went by so fast. You know, I'm telling you, I was on the bus heading back to the hotel after we won. I didn't know what happened at the game. You know, it was like, so that's why I'm thankful I got to go through it again. And I really tried to soak it all in more. Uh, you know, stayed out on the field and you know, just tried to slow things down, even though things were so fast. And um, but it, it doesn't. It didn't hit me the first time until the, the parade coming back here and just the, you know, the people that were lined up in the side streets and you know, confetti flying. It was uh, it was something special. Chris, I'm sorry, uh, Spike. What um, the New York championships that you've been around for, and the teams you root for? What is it that makes this particular team, this group, this story uh, so special compared to some other New York champions? Because they played and defeated supposedly the greatest team ever. I'm tired of about Tom Brady. 
And next time I see Pete Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, would you ever do a film about that play? Or that, that situation? No. <laughs> That's too painful. Huh? Marshall would probably be as loquacious as ever. Yeah. I didn't get him to talk. But I mean, that's I, for me. New York City is the greatest city in the world. And when we, when you were able to, to experience where the, the many you know the years the Yankees are winning, I was at the Buckner game in '86 when the Mets beat the Red Sox, and I'm old enough to be the you know the Knicks won their first World Championship. So I mean, this is they can tell you more than I can. But this, if you win, this is the greatest place in the world. Yeah. And we know how to. I mean, Joe Namath still can't, he can't spend money here in New York City. No one's going to let him pay for anything. <laughs> Willis Reed, I mean, if you do something here, yeah. I need you're that, good. That problem. What? <laughs> I need that problem. <laughs> 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 it didn't work out for me like that. I know. Take stuff out of it. Wait a second. It's less for football players because of the helmet. So it's quarterback and a quarterback. Yeah. Wait a second. You mean to tell me your money is good in New York? Man, you, it's you good. They, listen, they, they happy. They happy to pull that check out. <laughs> you know, I, I want to say this. Uh, you know, we, me and Antonio Pitts went out to eat when we, when we first got back. Yeah. And um, it was just me and him. We, you know, we just went to the store and do something to eat. I think we had just received our rings and you know, we were you know, sporting them around. And me and him, we literally walked into the Frisco's and we got a standing ovation. Wow. And I was like, what do we do? <laughs> you know, it was a great feeling. It was just me and him, and they sent us about like 30 bottles of champagne. Like, you know what <laughs> <laughs> well, 